past decade, both Boeing and Airbus have upgraded the engines on their 737 and A320 families. The new engines they've put in are around 14 to 15% more efficient compared to the older ones. However, the new CFM Rise engine is expected to surpass this improvement by a significant margin. Interestingly, a similar engine was almost developed 30 years ago. Boeing isn't planning to introduce or start working on a new aircraft until after this decade ends. While there are many details about what this means and how it affects Boeing's position compared to Airbus, one important aspect of Boeing's strategy is likely the anticipation of a major advancement in engine efficiency. As mentioned earlier, the CFM Rise engine is key to this. To grasp why, we need to look at how jet engines have progressed over time. When comparing jet engines from older airplanes to those used today, you'll notice a trend of increasing diameter. This growth is necessary for jet engines to generate more thrust effectively. They achieve this by either pushing air backwards faster or pushing a larger volume of air at the same speed. The latter option, pushing more air at the same speed, is more efficient. That's why turbofan engines have been getting larger over time, allowing them to increase their bypass ratio. This means they use a bigger fan to move more air around or bypass the engine core. Despite the increased size, newer high bypass turbofans are more efficient than older designs, despite the weight gain associated with enclosing them in larger nacelles. However, there are alternative methods for jet engines to move a significant amount of air backwards. In the 1980s, engine and aircraft manufacturers began exploring profanes, also known as unducted fans or open rotors. In its simplest form, open rotors operate similarly to turbofans, but with the distinction that the fan is not enclosed in a nacelle. Early open rotors featured two counter-rotating fan discs to deliver efficient thrust while maintaining a manageable diameter. Unlike modern turbofans, these fans had variable pitch fan blades, further enhancing their efficiency. Several companies worked on these concepts, with the Pratt & Whitney Allison 578 Delta X-Ray and the General Electric GE 36 being the most extensively developed in the 1980s. Pratt and Whitney Allison built upon Allison's previous research on prop fan design for NASA, while General Electric based its design on NASA studies, with support from SNECMA, a French engine manufacturer, as a minority partner. General Electric and SNECMA also participated in the CFM 56 joint venture. Today, SNECMA is now known as Safran, and the CFM joint venture is still active today. Pratt & Whitney and General Electric developed these prop fans because one of them would be chosen to power Boeing's 7J7, intended as a replacement for the 727. Technically, the 757 served as the replacement for the 727, although it was larger and had a longer range. While many older 727 customers appreciated this, not everyone was keen on upgrading to the 757. So, Boeing initially planned the 7J7 to be slightly smaller than the 757-200. However, this plan didn't materialize. Instead, Boeing opted to develop the 737NG, expanding the 737 to replace the 727 and compete with the upcoming Airbus A320 series. It's worth noting that the development of the 7J7 was well underway before it was shelved. Although Boeing never officially initiated the project, they discussed it with several airlines interested in replacing aging 727s, DC-9s, and even older 737s. The 7J7 was envisioned to incorporate advanced materials, sophisticated interior design, and cutting-edge avionics. Boeing even shared images of a fly-by-wire cockpit with control sticks instead of yokes. However, the project was halted primarily due to challenges with the engines. Open fan engines were ahead of their time and required extensive development. The Pratt & Whitney Allison 578 Delta X-Ray, for instance, had a gearbox to power the counter-rotating fans, raising concerns about durability. Boeing eventually opted for the G36, in part because it didn't require such a gearbox. However, Excessive noise became a significant issue for both engine designs. They were reportedly even louder than the low-bypass turbofans used on the MD-80 and the 727 at the time. While some argue that the noise problem was exaggerated, it's evident that today's CFM Leap and Pratt and Whitney geared turbofans are much quieter than the earlier turbofans, to which the open fan engines were compared. Consequently, nowadays, 
they would likely be considered exceptionally noisy. Ultimately, the decline in oil prices during the late 1980s had a detrimental impact on both the open fan engines and the Boeing 7J7. Airlines became less enthusiastic about investing in a new aircraft that, despite being more economical, featured untested and noisy technology. Consequently, Boeing shelved its plans indefinitely. Meanwhile, McDonnell Douglas considered fitting an MD-80 variant with either of these engines, but airlines showed little interest. So why revisit this topic now? What has changed since those early designs to make the CFM rise not only feasible, but also desirable? Well, fuel efficiency has once again become a top priority for everyone. Boeing has emphasized that its next aircraft must be at least 20% more efficient to remain competitive. The potential for significant efficiency improvements in open fan engines has existed since before the 1980s, which is why development persisted even after Boeing and McDonnell Douglas abandoned their plans. Throughout the years of development in the late 1980s and 1990s, engineers gained valuable insights into the technology required for open fan designs. In fact, this research had numerous benefits. For instance, General Electric's work on composite fan blades for its old G36 unducted fan proved invaluable for the GE90 engines, later used to power the Boeing 777. Similarly, advancements made for the CFM LEAP engines, used in the Boeing 737 MAX and Airbus A320neo, were influenced by earlier research on open fan designs. However, noise remained a significant concern. Here, Safran, the French engine manufacturer, delivered promising developments. Between 2017 and 2019, Safran developed and tested a new open rotor concept. This engine, similar to the G36 unducted fan, utilized a gearbox to drive the two counter-rotating fans. While gearbox reliability had improved over time, we'll delve into this shortly. The key point is that, thanks to notable advancements in design and materials, Safran indicated that the noise levels of this engine are comparable to the most recent CFM LEAP engines. If this holds true, it addresses one of the most significant criticisms of this design. However, even more exciting news was yet to come. General Electric, in collaboration with Safran on the 2017 Open Rotor project, devised a solution to simplify the design. They successfully transitioned from a pair of counter-rotating fans to a single fan with a second set of non-rotating variable incident stators behind it. This innovative design now forms the basis of the CFM Rise, which stands for Revolutionary Innovation for Sustainable Engines. While CFM publicly introduced this idea in June 2021, it had been in development since 2019, building upon Safran and General Electric's previous efforts. The transition from two counter-spinning fans to a single rotating fan was enabled by advancements in computer and fluid dynamics technology that were beyond the engineer's capabilities at the time. Furthermore, the development of lightweight yet robust fan blades was crucial. With a single rotating fan, a much simpler gearbox, similar to the established design used in turboprops for years, is required. This new arrangement has the potential to further reduce noise levels. According to CFM, the RISE design will comply with all current and future noise level regulations. When it comes to efficiency, expectations for these engines are exceptionally high. While the maximum bypass ratio of a modern turbofan in a single-aisle aircraft today is roughly 12 to 1, the CFM RISE architecture allows for bypass ratios of up to 20 to 1. With weight savings and other innovations included in the CFM RISE project, CFM believes that a 20% increase in efficiency relative to the best engines currently on the market is an achievable goal. This significant improvement is crucial to Boeing and Airbus's future ambitions. CFM expects to have an engine ready for ground testing by the middle of this decade, which is only a few years away. Flight tests for the CFM Rise engine are scheduled to commence in the second half of the decade. Last summer, Airbus announced a collaboration with CFM to conduct these flight tests by modifying an Airbus A380 test aircraft. The CFM Rise will replace one of the four turbofan engines under the wing, which will be an intriguing sight to witness. It's worth noting that Airbus is already preparing an Airbus A380 for testing with hydrogen-burning turbofans and hydrogen fuel cells. 
Incorporating a hydrogen fuel system into an existing aircraft for such testing requires a significant amount of effort. This is important because CFM also intends to test the RISE engine running on hydrogen. Having an Airbus A380 capable of carrying this fuel will be quite beneficial. CFM also aims for the RISE engine to operate on 100% sustainable aviation fuel, aligning with the objective for all present and upcoming engines in the next decade. Regarding who will be the first to implement this new engine into their designs, it's likely that both Boeing and Airbus will develop their own versions. This technology is too significant to overlook, and neither company would let the other pursue it without competition. Additionally, don't forget about Embraer, which recently announced plans for a new turboprop with a familiar engine arrangement. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and until the next one,